These presentations will cover some of the basic crystallographic properties of the minerals. Not the minerals as a whole, but particularly of calcite. Why calcite? Because it's intended for those that initiate the study of calcareous nanoplankton or calcareous nanofossils in a petrographic microscope like this one that I have here. The optical microscope that we are using, the petrographic microscope, have some differences, some main differences from the other common, more common biological microscopes that normally students are more familiar with. So what are the basic differences? In this case, we have the light source that coming in this way, and then we have a polarizer here. We'll discuss this later on. We have here a polarizer, a linear polarizer. Then we have here a condenser that condenses, that focus all the light in a very small beam. And then we have a rotary stage. This is also very important for our observations as we'll see later on. This rotary stage is also connected to an overstage that is translational according to these two main directions. The overstage allows us to display the slide with our calcareous nanofossils because calcareous nanofossils are so small that we cannot move with our fingers. It would be very easy to lose our objective, our calcareous nanofossil under observation. So we need an overstage for translational movements over a rotational stage. Then we have an objective, an objective that magnifies 100 times. 100 times is what we normally use in our calcareous nanoplankton observations. We need a special objective that is adapted to use immersion oil and also adapted to polarized light. And then we have here, in this position, an auxiliary plate. This plate, we'll see later on what is the purpose of it. In most cases, there's no need for it, but in some cases, as we'll see, it can be useful. In this case, is a gypsum plate. We have here another polarizer. Here is the analyzer. We can remove it we can insert it. So this is another polarizer that we'll discuss later on. It's called the analyzer. Here we have an auxiliary lens, the Amici Bertrand lens, that normally we don't use with calcareous nanofossils, but in some cases is useful, namely to determine the optical sign of the crystal. In our case, we already know what it is. Calcite has a specific optical signal that we'll discuss later on. But this is also an important tool in a petrographic microscope. And then we have the eyepieces. The eyepieces, the oculars, normally have a magnitude of 12.5 magnification. Normally, in one of the oculars, there's also a micrometer that helps to determine uh, very fast measurements of our calcareous nanofossils. It's also useful to have a reticulum, a graduated reticulum in one of the oculars. And then it's also useful to have a triocular with a digital camera to register and to record our calcareous nanofossils. Since we cannot collect them and keep them separately, we have to demonstrate their presence through the digital photography in this case. And this is basically all the particularities and all the instruments that the petrographic microscope has. And as we'll see, it's important for our crystallographic and mineralogical observations. In our case, the calcite is the mineral that we'll discuss. Fortunately for us, the calcite, which is the common mineral for most of the calcareous nanofossils, with very small exceptions, for instance, the ascidian spicules are made of aragonite, but most, in most cases, calcite is the mineral that we uh, are dealing with in calcareous nanofossils. And 
our advantage is that in many crystallographic approaches, many crystallographic and mineralogical courses, the calcite is the mineral that is normally used to illustrate most of the properties that we'll discuss, namely the bioreferengence of the crystals and of the minerals, namely the retardation colors that we can see, and also how can minerals, calcite in our case, can be seen under cross-polarizing light. The light that comes from the source vibrates in all directions. But when it passes through the polarizer, it only vibrates in one direction. So the light that passes through the polarizer and comes through the object just vibrates in this direction. The analyzer only allows light to pass vibrating in this direction normal to the polarizer. So, if nothing interferes, the light that comes from the polarizer vibrating like that cannot pass the analyzer. So, the field becomes dark. It's the dark field. The dark field is obtained with cross polars or cross nickels. Everything that is isotrope or of the cubic system, minerals of the cubic system, or organic matter that does not interfere with the light, for instance, diatom frustals, or objects that have the optical axis on the vertical, and those also don't interfere with light, in all these cases, they become extinct. All the others that are mineralogic and anisotrope, they interfere with light and can be visible. So let me turn the light into the microscope. So in these conditions, light vibrates in all directions, passes through the polarizer, vibrating in one direction, and it came out like that and we can see it on the screen. But if we introduce the analyzer, the analyzer blocks the light that is vibrating from the polarizer. The analyzer does not allow it to pass through and so we have the dark field. We have the dark field in cross polars or cross nickels. If we introduce something that is isotrope, like uh, some glass or organic material in the middle, they don't interfere with light and so the field becomes dark or continues dark. So now let's insert a sample with calcareous nanofossils that are composed of calcite, an anisotrope mineral, and see what happens. So now we can see all these structures. They are made of calcite. Each one of them are a single calcareous nanofossil and we can see them all over the place. Between them there's the dark field, but they can be seen because they interfere with light and so light can pass it through the analyzer and come to the eyepiece or in this case to the triocular and to the digital camera. 